the next illustration is on uh, the Labrador coast at a little place called West Bay. And West Bay was the summer fishing home of six families who live in the winter uh, in just a smaller place, um, a place called the North River. Very, very shy people. And uh, at the time we did this, I didn't know them really well, so the shyness was even more remarkable. And none of them had seen moving images before. So when they saw uh, the material there, they were quite amazed and also horrified because they wound up talking about the local merchant who they sold their fish to on uh, what they called open receipt, which meant that he'd tell you in the fall what, what your catch was worth. And they, usually the, the merchant uh, weighed the fish also and provided supplies to the people and they would square up in the fall. And the merchant would usually say, well, you didn't do too bad. You're only $500 in the hole, but we'll see you through the winter. So they very hesitatingly talked about this kind of bondage that they were in. When they saw the film, uh, they were afraid. And they said, please don't show that because if the merchant gets wind of it or sees it, uh, he'll cut off our food or our credit during the winter. So we didn't show it. But by the very fact of them seeing it, it got them thinking. And they, they started saying, you know, gee, we, we really don't need to rent Graplins every year. They've been paying $5 a year for Graplins. They paid for those Graplins a thousand times over. And uh, they're renting nets. And, and uh, they said, maybe it would be wise if we got a scale to weigh the salmon before we ship them so they'd know at least what they were catching, that kind of thing. And within a couple of years, they were selling their uh, salmon to competitive buyers then. And so the process had started them thinking about these things that they had always accepted as a given. And when the merchant died, uh, I went back and said, well, now is it safe to use this material? They said, yeah, you can use the material. What are Graplins? <laughs> Graplins. Uh, that's the uh, clawed anchor that holds uh, the net in place. Where are you from? <laughs> Los Angeles. <laughs> a fishing community. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, okay. The other thing is that uh, I've tried to show this in other parts of the world, like in India, and the, and the accents are so different that nobody can understand a word that they're saying. And, and uh, I showed, I sent from Black Tickle, the very th thick accents, and uh, I had a letter from Trent University in Ontario saying, look, we show some of your films every year, but could you send us a script because nobody understands what the people are saying. One community visited was West Bay, a summer fishing place for six families. This is part of a scripted like introduction to the Labrador material. They are almost totally dependent upon a local merchant from whom they rent nets year after year and to whom they sell their catch. The traditional annual squaring up usually finds a small profit or loss on the books only. Seldom are there cash transactions. For the summer months of 1969, for the first time in over 20 years, West Bay had a school teacher. In their winter home at North River, there has never been a school. Perhaps how many families belong here to West, West Bay? Six. Is this a most families that belong here, or did there used to be a lot more people around? No, one time it wasn't many. There wasn't? No. Was there ever any more? No. All the places I've seen on this coast, I would say that with that long strand and the wind here, this is a pretty hard place to get in and out of sometimes. Yes, it's a hard place to see on. It's blowing in on the land of the North Sea when it makes it rough, you know. It's a hard job working the nets? Yes, it's a hard job working the nets when it's rough. Do you find 
buy your nets from Becky? No, we do have them hard out, you know. Chance when we buy them, not too many. How much does it cost to hire them? Well, before this year, our yard state was fifty dollars. Other years, I know it was fifty dollars for a new net on net. Fifty dollars on net, but this year it's done a party of late. Well, if you rent a net for forty or fifty dollars a year, in two or three years, that net practically is paid for. How come none of you fellows buy your own nets? Mm -hmm. I don't know the reason why that, I'm sure. I think it's a lot cheaper to buy your own net, sure enough. But really the trouble there, I suppose, is on the kind of the people don't get far enough aid in the park and have enough money to do that somehow. And uh, therefore they got to look for a bit of rub deed instead of buying the net. And the same thing happens every year around. Well, when you square up at the end of the season, do you get paid cash at the, at the end of the season? No, we don't see no cash. If we had the uh, thousand dollars there, oh, we might ask for a hundred dollars, but we screw the nose and say, well, what do you want about? I mean, you, in the wintertime, then, you only operate on credit. Yes, I couldn't get credit. But not too much credit, they let out. They might let you have a bit of credit in the fall. Of course, most of the people use our employment in the wintertime. And they trap and get a bit of fur. I don't understand. You say that at the end of the season, when you square up, you don't get any cash, but you do come out ahead at the end of the season, don't you? Well, most everybody come out ahead. Yes, they have come out ahead a lot. I have come out ahead a lot me on some. More than once, not a lot, no. But enough to uh, get along pretty good if things wasn't so dear. It's a cost to buy the food. Do you ever ask for the cash? I you? have asked for the cash a good many more besides me, I know. But if you uh, ask for it, the same as I said, uh, they ask you what you want about. They wouldn't they screw up your nose if they ask and say, well, you want to draw all the money, which you, you know, I mean, you should. You could. And you have got enough cash to pay us anyway. And you only ever give you a check. And if you had any, any size of a check, or well, you wouldn't ever cash it anyway. You know the son knew. What that last man was referring to uh, was that even in the winter when you got your family allowance checks or your unemployment checks and you took that into the store, they wouldn't give you change for that. You might only want to buy a tin of carnation milk. They'd say, they'd take the check and say, well, now you take things off the shelves until we tell you to stop. And uh, so they have to spend it all in that store, whether they wanted to or not, because they wouldn't get any change for the for the check. I mean, that was going on not very long ago. Those are samples of that early material. I think it illustrates for you. Uh, as I say, one didn't only focus on on the problems uh, in the collection of 27 Fogo modules. There's uh, Chris Cobb telling stories and singing old songs. There is a wedding. There is a step dance and a party at Jim Decker's house. Uh, so there are lots of the enjoyable parts of life that are portrayed as well as, the, as critical issues or, or difficulties. <clears throat> 